What's up everybody, welcome to episode 9 of the Yo Corey G Show. And on today's show, we're going to go over do I snack and how did I finally build up my overhead squat. Yo, Corey G, our first question here is from Denzel. Denzel asks, what snacks do you usually have when you're cutting? I often feel a little hungry after my first meal. Hey, what's up, Denzel? So a lot of people ask me on anabolic fasting if I snack in between my meals. And I would tell you that if you're starving after you eat those meals, you're probably almost 100% of the time not eating enough vegetables. That's what I run into constantly with that protocol as people are always excited about their protein, but they just don't eat enough veggies. So I do not snack in between my meals. I make sure that I eat the proper amount that I explain on CoreyGFitness.com. And don't skip, you got to eat. Yo, Corey G, we have two questions here from Poindex. The first one asks, what can I do as a replacement if I can't get to the bar and not lose my streak on squat life? And the second one asks, what are the three bands from Westside Barbell I should have in my arsenal of gym equipment? Hey, what's up, man? Two great questions from my man, Poindex. So here's the deal. Number one was, what's your replacement if you can't get to a squat bar while you're traveling to keep your streak? So my rule is 250 bodyweight squats. If you're out there and you can't get to the bar, 250 bodyweight squats, and I'll let you slide. Question two. What's the three bands that you should buy from Westside Barbell? Westside-barbell.com is mini bands, average bands, and heavy bands. So that would be the red, the green, and the blue will allow you to properly do any of the Westside techniques or some of the conjugate squat everyday techniques that I talk about. So there you go. All your squat needs are met. Yo, Corey G, our next question here asks, for Olympic weightlifting besides overhead squat, are there any new strength movements you're having to incorporate to improve your lifts? So I kind of make jokes about it all the time. Uh, you know, that my overhead squat was like 75 to 95 pounds when I started. So that's a great question. Uh, it all comes down to upper back and, and opening up your chest. So like my chest has always grown easy. So I was kind of like this. So then when I was trying to put a bar over my head like this, my shoulders didn't even know what the hell was going on. So ideally, like, building tons more upper back work, and I'll tell you, behind the neck military presses to my earlobes, like, I didn't do any overhead squats since the muscle trifecta because I was working mostly on powerlifting and bodybuilding stuff. I continued to do behind the neck presses, tees, arrows, presses, all kinds of upper back work, and then I was still doing hang snatches 165 the other day for doubles, catching it pretty good when really my work weight for a snatch is normally about 185 and my PR was like 200. So the fact that I didn't even do it for six months, my mobility was still, still there. I was able to snatch the weight, catch it, stay stable. It's because my upper back, rear delts, trap work, and all that has been so, so solid. And so what I would recommend is really key on those things at the beginning of your week before you would have a chance to do pressing and stuff for your front delts that will close you down that's going to make your overhead stability and overhead squats so much better. So that's what you need to look at your repertoire of your whole exercise profile, what you got going on, and make sure you program towards meeting that need and not making it like harder on yourself. All right, next question, about to give this dude a cameo real quick, is my high school intern, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. I want to hear your question. Okay, this guy. So I'm going to... Yo, Corey G. So I'm, a, <laughs> so I'm an aspiring bodybuilder, and since I'm young, I want to know, like, should I put, like, posing into my GPP? Is that right? So GPP is general physical preparedness, so that wouldn't really classify in that. Now, you are preparing to hit stage, so I guess it kind of does, but uh, that's not traditionally how people look at it. What I would say is the style of posing that a physique like yours or mine is, um, is more the Frank Zane, the flow posing stuff over your head, like stuff that makes basically a guy that's really not that big look bigger, right? And so I would study the 70s style posing of those guys. And I think that, you know, in between, um, you're shooting mostly videos for us at the gym, but in between some of your sets, you can throw up some poses every now and again. Right now you're at such a stage where you're building 
that I would do some of that stuff maybe on your off time at your house, practice some of those poses, and if that's truly a goal of yours is to be on stage, set a 24-month, 36-month goal, like maybe that's something that you should be doing as you're graduating high school. You want to also compete in your first bodybuilding show. I wouldn't put a ton of value on it right this second, but I think it's mindful, you know, weekly to kind of just mess around with it here and there so you can see what positions your body and your physique looks the best in. So, good question, Kyle. Thanks. Yo, thanks for watching episode nine of the Yo Corey G Show. And if you want me to answer your question, hashtag Yo Corey G or DM me on Snapchat at Corey G Fitness. And for all your supplement needs, check out my boy Max at MaxEverMuscle.com. Thank you.